Hey there. If you're new to our channel, you can subscribe by clicking the leaf icon in the bottom right corner of the video. Click the bell icon to turn on notifications. And please be sure to like and comment below. The world of vegan businesses is booming. From bleeding burgers to dairy-free cheese to cruelty-free skincare, there are new vegan products gracing supermarket shelves, luxury department stores, and restaurants from the fast to the fancy. The vegan market is thriving because consumer attitudes are changing. It's supply and demand. Now is the time to get into vegan business. More than half of Brits are willing to ditch meat to save the planet. 16 million choose vegan milk over dairy. In the US, nearly half of households regularly purchase dairy-free drinks, and 114 million are eating more plant-based food. People are also opting for cruelty-free in their skincare, household items, and clothing. Nearly 100% of the UK population are in favor of a worldwide ban on cosmetic animal testing, for example. Using animals to test cosmetics is still allowed in most of the world which means that thousands of animals can continue to die for the sake of a new shampoo, which is ridiculous. If you're a budding entrepreneur, there's never been a better time to jump into the vegan market. Here are seven tips to help you get your business started. Number one, identify your target market. Identifying a target market is the foundation of building a brand. It's only when you know who you're talking to that you can start to develop your business. You can determine your target market by defining your product or service and then researching other similar businesses. Let's say your product is a vegan candle business. Everyone loves candles, right? But what kind of consumer regularly spends their money on candles? As The Guardian reported at the end of 2018, the industry has boomed, in part because of social media influencers. So in this case, your target audience could include people who follow home inspiration Instagram accounts, for example. This gives you a place to start your research. You can find out more about your target market by using services like SurveyMonkey. The site has its own audience panel, with respondents from all over the world. It has several different survey templates to choose from, and can even build you a custom product concept testing survey. The testing survey asks customers a variety of questions including if the product were to be available today, how likely would you be to buy the product? Using this service, you can determine a number of factors including the age, gender, and geographical location of potential customers. You can post your survey on social media or send out to SurveyMonkey's own audience panel. Then there are focus groups, gathering together a few people to test and review a product. Eventbrite says the ideal number of people for a focus group is between 10 and 15. If you're not working with an agency that hosts focus groups, you can pull together your own, post flyers in local coffee shops, post on social media, and even take out ads on sites like Craigslist. Think about where your targeted customer is likely to have a few minutes to review your flyer. If your product is a new line of vegan pregnancy vitamins, for example, place an ad in a doctor's waiting room or on a pregnancy forum. You could also offer participants an incentive, like a gift voucher, which increases the likelihood of them turning up to your group. It helps to pay focus group participants a small honorarium, anywhere from $25 to $200. To determine your target audience, spread out your focus groups to include people of different ages and backgrounds, or aim to hold one with different people represented within that group. Sometimes, the target market and the target audience are two separate things. If your product is for young children, for example, it's unlikely they will be making the purchases themselves. If it's a plastic-free cuddly toy, it needs to be appealing to both caregivers and children. Find out what caregivers look for in toys, but also, most importantly, conduct market research into what children find most engaging. Companies like Giraffe Insights specialize in children's market research. They can help you collect the information you need by conducting online surveys and holding focus groups for you. It says on its website, As specialists in kids, youth, and family research, we offer our clients tailored research solutions, conducted by a team of experts who offer a fresh perspective on the consumers of tomorrow. Focusing on underserved markets could even give you an edge over competitors. 
If you focus your research on the smaller area, you can work out exactly what this customer base is looking for and cater directly to their pain points. Number two, prepare a business plan. Writing out a business plan is essential to the success of your business. It will help you think about your strategy and the specific steps you need to take to reach your goal, including fundraising. According to business magazine Entrepreneur, a perfectly written business plan requires thorough research before you even type the first word. What is the service or product you want to launch? Is it a vegan bakery? Are you a clothing designer? How will you gather the right amount of materials or ingredients? To help you along, you could use a Business Model Canvas, or BMC. According to entrepreneur Alexander Cowan, a BMC will give you the structure of a business plan. It has nine different elements. The first is customer segments. Who are your customers? What do they do? The second is value propositions. What's different or compelling about your idea? Why would people need or want it? The third is channels. What channels will you use to get your product or service to the customer? Other elements include customer relationships, revenue streams, key activities, key resources, key partnerships, and cost structure, all of which are explained thoroughly on Cowan's website. According to Cowan, BMCs are popular with entrepreneurs and investors because they provide focus, flexibility, and transparency. Number three, snap up domains and social media handles. Once you name your company or product, make sure you grab the relevant domains and social media handles. Don't underestimate the power and influence of social media either. When your business gets going, these platforms will be invaluable marketing platforms for you and one of the easiest ways to grow with a limited budget. Although a social media strategy team can be one of the best spends for a small business, you can start out on your own mastering many of these techniques for yourself. Social platforms help you connect with your customers, increase awareness about your brand, and boost your leads and sales. The Marketing Insider Group says, more than 3 billion people use social media every month, making it a no-brainer for startups. You should identify which social media platform is right for you to focus on, and this goes back to your target audience. If your goal is to be business to business, consider focusing on platforms like LinkedIn. If your target audience is millennials and Gen Zers, your focus should be on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Find out where your people are. Are you starting a vegan skincare line? The beauty blogging industry has exploded in recent years, and the main platforms for influencers and bloggers are Instagram and YouTube. So this is where you need to be too. If it all seems like a lot to manage, there are social media marketing software tools to help you. Hootsuite, for example, has more than 16 million users around the world. It allows you to manage all of your social media in one place. You can now build omni-channel reports in Adobe Analytics for all of your marketing channels. Hootsuite Impact Social Data is available in Adobe Analytics Workspace, so you can combine it with existing web analytics and get a holistic view of your digital marketing campaign performance. Not sure if that's the right tool for you? It will give you a free trial period so you have time to decide. Loomly is another choice. It's easy to use and offers several different packages, including Solo, for one user operating 10 social media accounts, Pro, and Small Team, for varying amounts of accounts and users. It will also provide you with post inspiration and allow you to see exactly how your post will look before you post it. Number four. Learn how to network. Business News Daily notes that the most successful entrepreneurs get to where they're going because of the people they've met along the way. Make business cards to hand out at every opportunity, be it a corporate event or simply running errands. Everyone is a potential customer. Social media comes in handy again when it comes to networking. PX CEO Franz Van Hull says, Use platforms like LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook to produce, comment on, and engage with relevant industry content to build trust among your followers. You'll also generate inbound networking. Contacts will find and reach out to you, so you'll spend less time having to actively seek more contacts. LinkedIn is a particularly good platform to use for online networking. 
According to Forbes, there are many effective ways to use it. Reach out to others, but make sure each message is customized instead of sending out the same generic text. Accept connection requests when relevant people reach out to you as soon as possible. You should also trust the algorithm and review and connect to those who are suggested to you by LinkedIn. Try to get higher than 500 connections, Forbes recommends, as these profiles do not show the amount of connections they have. The publication explains, there is a psychological phenomenon where we believe people with 500 plus in their profile are somehow more accomplished. Outside of social media, participate in local events. If you make vegan cheese, for example, find out when food markets are taking place in your town or find out about larger events you can travel to. If you're in the beauty world, look for anything beauty related. Same with fashion or food. If you're not sure how to go about finding the right events for you, you can use services like Meetup. Meetup allows users to organize and find events with like-minded people. It can be a useful resource for finding local business networking events, talk to people, build contacts, and get advice from others. Eventbrite also lists out events by region, and they're sortable by event type too. Consider collaborations as well. Bouncing ideas is a great way to come up with new creative strategies for your business. It will also open up more opportunities for you and the business or individual you're collaborating with. If you're designing a line of vegan bags, for example, are there any other eco-fashion brands you could link with? What about an ethical fabric supplier? Ultimately, the more people you bring into your network, the more opportunities are created. Number five pay attention to branding. First impressions count, and branding is critical to your business. How do you want people to perceive your business? What do you want them to think or feel when they visit your website, your social media page, or see your product on a shelf or rack? Make sure your style is reflective of your brand's voice. Does it represent your company's message? Is it engaging to the customer? Does it clearly explain the product's structure, function, and benefits? Branding helps people develop a clear perception of your company. It can build your business and increase awareness. Branding Meg notes that having an effective logo is particularly important, as it is essentially the face of the company. It should be both powerful and memorable. Not a designer? Don't know any? There are a number of resources designed to help you. Use Fiverr to connect with professional graphic designers. It's an online marketplace for freelancing services. It offers a platform to creative professionals, including graphic designers, voiceover artists, and writers. You could also use Upwork, a global freelancing platform where businesses and independent high-quality professionals can connect and collaborate remotely. You can find assistance on sites like ProBlogger, LinkedIn's ProFinder platform, and even Craigslist to find that skilled expert fast. Number six, be open to different ways of fundraising. When starting a company on a budget, raising capital is going to be one of the most important factors for your success. Thankfully, there are many ways in which you can secure financial support. You can ask friends and family to help you when it comes to finances. Forbes says, consider inviting family and friends to invest in the company with the understanding that their money may not be returned. In most cases, these friends and family are investing in you, not your business. Both parties should think of this investment as a grant with no strings attached. You could also consider a small bank loan. Most banks and credit unions offer small business loans. To apply, you will be expected to provide the bank with a full understanding of your business. You will need to prove that you have the skills and expertise to make your business plan work. You could also look for angel investors. Forbes says, this affluent individual or a group of individuals who pool their research and resources, provides capital for a business startup, usually in exchange for convertible debt or ownership equity. These angel groups can be found in most communities and on the internet with a description of their purpose and objectives. After doing their due diligence, these groups will determine if your business meets their requirements, and if so, will schedule a meeting to gather more data. Investments can range from $50,000 to $500,000 or more. At this stage of the business, angels become very real and serious investors and owners with high expectations looking for solid results. For guidance, consider heading back to school for a course or two. Class Rebel offers a digital fundraising 101 course. 
I'm Brooke Harley, and I'm gonna be your instructor over the next few hours as we talk about how to navigate you through both the art and the science of raising money for your company. The six module program will teach you how to find the right investors and how to approach them. It will also help you with what to include in a pitch deck to give a quick overview of your business plan. You can show it to investors, potential co-founders, partners, and even customers interested in helping you succeed. By the end of the Fundraising 101 course, you'll be able to navigate financial conversations with investors and know which terms of the deal you need to focus on to keep as much equity and control as possible over your business. Crowdfunding is another option for financing your business. Platforms like Kickstarter and Indiegogo are responsible for a number of major success stories. Did you watch the Veronica Mars movie? That was made possible through Kickstarter. I'm sure you know breaking and entering is a felony. Come on, I knew the felonies before I knew the state capitals. Fans of the teen TV show raised more than $5 million. Bobax was able to create the world's best travel jacket thanks to Kickstarter and Indiegogo. In July 2015, it raised more than $9 million. The following September, it raised a further $2 million. For the newer version of the jacket, the Bobax 2.0, another $4 million was raised on Indiegogo. Pebble crowdfunded its first smartwatch on Kickstarter back in 2012, managing to raise more than $10 million. Kickstarter says that people love peeking behind the creative curtain and directly supporting the creative process. In fact, 13.9 million people have pledged more than 3.39 billion to bring Kickstarter projects to life over the years. Number seven, find a mentor. Consider finding a mentor or advisor to help you along the way. Someone with experience and expertise in the field you're interested in entering. It's going to be much easier if they also share the vision you have for your business, but sometimes consulting with someone outside of your focus can be helpful as well. They can often see things from another angle and help you identify new opportunities. According to Entrepreneur Magazine, many successful business people have mentors. Mark Zuckerberg was mentored by Steve Jobs, for example. Experience is a very expensive asset, yet it's crucial to business success, the publication notes. There's only so much about a person's experience you can gain from books. It's an unstated truth that most authors do not feel comfortable revealing everything about themselves in books. Some personal experiences may be too intimate to be shared, yet how they dealt with it can help an inexperienced entrepreneur's career. Mentorship is one guaranteed way to gain experience from others. Advisors can also help you with networking and contacts, as well as provide reassurance and encouragement along the way. For more information on starting a vegan business, specifically a food business, you could visit the Good Food Institute website. GFI engages scientists, policymakers, and entrepreneurs in a bid to advance vegan products. Its website contains details on different funding opportunities, as well as information on events for vegan entrepreneurs. Using its search tool, you can find upcoming expos, conferences, workshops, entrepreneur meetups, and pitch competitions near you. It also has a database with a number of readings and research documents, useful for those just starting out. Find out more about making meat with plants or the egg alternative market. You can also find out about the lab-grown meat market and consumer surveys. In the past, lighting one's home was synonymous with killing a whale. And in our world today, we conflate eating animals and eating meat, when in fact you can actually separate them. Do you feel inspired? If you take the leap, you could join the world of vegan business, which is becoming more profitable every day. In May, vegan meat brand Beyond Meat held one of the most successful initial public offerings of 2019. The company saw its valuation leap from $1.2 billion to more than $3.8 billion. It's predicted that the vegan meat market could be worth more than $40 billion in the next decade, thanks in part to Beyond Meat's IPO. So we're trying to have meat eaters eat Beyond Meat because that's how we're gonna change the world. Across the board, vegan industry is thriving. The dairy alternatives market was recently valued at $1.2 billion. On its own, the vegan milk market is worth more than $1.8 billion. Vegan fashion and beauty are also thriving. The vegan cosmetics market is expected to surpass $20.8 billion by 2025. In the fashion world, 
cruelty-free footwear in particular has taken off. Vegan shoes accounted for 32% of the footwear market in the U.S. in 2018. This growth is not solely driven by vegans. Quite the opposite. In the food world, this core customer is often called flexitarian. These are people who are making more ethical decisions with their purchases, opting to reduce their consumption of products that are harmful to their health and to the planet. In the UK, a study from earlier this year showed that 91% of the population now identify themselves as flexitarian. The ethical consumer market is growing, and the business opportunities are endless. Do you have an idea for a vegan business? Will you be taking the plunge and starting your own brand anytime soon? Let us know your biggest business challenges in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. New videos every Tuesday and Friday.